I cannot believe that I'm saying this, but our lounge, diner, the entire thing is plastered. We've now got the doors for both the cupboard under the stairs and the what's going to be a coat cupboard or potentially where we keep our bins. We're still kind of working that out. That door that we patched up is forever gone. Uh, you could never tell that there was one here once. I mean, actually, if you come this side, you kind of can. But for now, it looks so good. All of this hasn't been touched. Sorry, the lighting's terrible because we've removed the ceiling lights. We will be putting those back in. But uh, all of this white wall is the original house. A plasterer uh, took a look at it and just said it really did not need replastering. So we're leaving that as is and waiting for this to dry and painting can begin. So plans in the kitchen. We have a few things to do before our kitchen can be delivered. With this house, things are never quite as simple as just getting on with the next job. I don't know if you can really see right now, but there's a pretty big step down into the kitchen. So we will be raising the floor so that it's in line with the back door. But to be in line with the back door, we actually want to install our new back doors first so we know exactly where the bottom of that door is going to rest. Now, our current back door is just a single door and we are actually going to be installing double doors, they're heritage style doors. I'm absolutely obsessed with them and they have just been delivered. Let me show you those quickly. Still don't have lights, but the beautiful back doors have been delivered. I'm so excited. Here's all of the individual glass panels that are gonna go in there. Here's a picture of what they actually look like. Appreciate it's a bit dark. But before we can put those in, we will have a bigger door opening, meaning that we need to install a lintel. So before we can get to decorating this kitchen and bringing in the new kitchen, we need to install the lintel, install the back doors, raise the floor. After that, we'll be doing underfloor heating, laying the flooring, bringing the kitchen in, all of that good stuff. But yeah, we've got some actual building work to do before we get cracking with that. And that's why we've not started decorating the lounge and dining room just yet. There's gonna be a lot of dust, a lot of dirt, even more building equipment. And so yeah, it's just important that we get all of the dirty stuff done before we get to what I think is the exciting bit, decorating. So over this weekend, Tom and his dad are going to be installing the lintel. It is a massive job. We've got our aqua props, we've got our strong boys, we've got the lintel, we've got everything we need. Uh, but before we can do that, our kitchen has to be taken out. So we've got the very fun task of moving all of this into here. Okay, I think this kitchen is actually gonna be easier to take out than we first thought. The worktop is not actually connected to the, the unit, it's attached to the wall, so, so all we have to do is remove a few screws, and I think the unit's just gonna slot out, and that's perfect, because we don't need it all removed yet. Um, it still means we've got countertop space to prep while the screed settles. Good morning, it is the next day and uh, the kitchen is mainly removed. We didn't take everything out. Most of our kitchen stuff, or at least our food and our pots and pans and plates and everything have all been removed. And the reason that we cleared the kitchen was because something exciting is happening today. You can probably hear the sounds of it happening in the background, but in our kitchen, we currently have a single door, which is a single green door, which we are completely removing, but we're putting in double doors. Now our double doors are 2.1 meters high by 1.4 meters across, 
uh, which means we can't just replace it with another door. We need to make the opening bigger. And because the opening's bigger, we need adequate support. So we are installing a lintel. We are installing our own lintel, uh, which is said to be an adventure and a half. Tom and Martin sent through the calculations. It's all signed off by building control. And so now we can get to action. Uh, we're set for a very messy, very busy day. Let's get cracking. So we've just marked out where the lintel's gonna go and now we're gonna be just chiseling away of all the plaster to get back to the bricks. To move the plaster, we're back to the bricks now. Um, we know where the lintel's gonna go. We've removed an extra layer of the plaster and we're gonna install this piece of wood along the top. So a trick I read about, um, when we're removing the bricks below, sometimes they can crumble down. So what we've done is drill a piece of wood into all the bricks there. It should just help give extra support to the bricks above and stop them uh, at risk of falling. So next, we are installing our Acroprops and Strong Boys to help to support the wall so we've just chiseled out some of the mortar there and then we can just slot in the strong boy to help support all this i'm watching this back and editing and it's just so funny to remember how much i was shitting myself on this day i just tom and martin are very capable and they know exactly what they're doing but looking at us making holes on the first floor of our house and seeing that just completed loft conversion above, I just kept, I, all I could think about was the whole house crumbling down. But, not to ruin the video, it doesn't. So we just put up the Aqua Props and Strong Boys, but what I'm doing first is making a base, so just using some bricks and some wood, and that just helps stop the Strong Boy sinking into the softer soil below. So this is the process we tend to follow. Tom does the job, part one. Martin fixes said job. <laughs> you? You just film. I, I film. <laughs> it's a it's a great team. <laughs> slash terrifying stage, removing all of these bricks. So we've now got our first hole this side and we'll be placing this lintel. What we're first gonna do is just pour a bit of water on either side uh, of where the mortar's gonna go, and that just helps soak up the, stop. <laughs> that just helps soak up the mortar uh, when we dry pack it. So when we did the calculation, it said we didn't need a pad stone. Um, but what we are gonna do is just use a couple of engineering bricks, uh, just because they're gonna be stronger than the current bricks there. Um, and we had some left over. It's time! It's time for the lintel. So yeah, we've prepped everything, we've made the hole. So now it's just putting the lintel in position. Let's do this. And I think, because we've done a beam before, this is like a quarter of the way. So yeah, if we can do the 200 kg beam, we can definitely do the 60 kg lintel. No, uh, no slack line required today. Just these. Took a 
fair bit of shimmying, but lintel number one is in. So now the lintel's in place, there's a bit of a gap at the top, uh, so we're going to pack it with a dry mix. That's going to be two and a half parts sharp sand to one part cement, and then just enough water to make sure it kind of moulds together. And we're just going to pack that. Any larger pieces, we're going to put slate, um, just to kind of pack it up even further. The reason for a dry mix is that um, it, it won't settle as much, so it's kind of compact. So when you can release the acropops, it's not going to sag. So this is what it should look like. To be able to just about make a ball with it without it kind of falling apart so it just sticks together so i'm not sure if you can see but we've got slate packing it here and then we're just going to fill the rest of the gaps in with the dry mix once you put it in we're using a small bit of 10 mil wood and then that's just pushing it right in so it fills all the gaps so all compact this side now it's time to get the other lintel in. So hopefully, because we've done one already, we should know how to do it a little bit better this time. Nice. Push the bottom. Yeah, so loose. successful day's work for Tom and Martin we have the lintels installed outside so they've now been packed in but there are still some gaps just to the sides not structural obviously that need filling in um, but it's almost dark so we're not gonna do that today what I now have to deal with is the mess that's been left behind in our kitchen this is the current state of affairs and you can't actually see it on camera but there is a thick layer of dust across everything. Now it's still gonna be a couple of weeks until our floor is raised and the back doors are installed and the room is plastered. So we're not near having a new kitchen. I mean, we're not far, but we're certainly not very close, which means that all of that kitchen that we just took out needs to come back in. And so we wanna make sure we clean this properly. So um, that's my job. And if you're wondering why I'm like this, it's because there's holes in the wall. So it's absolutely freezing. But there's nothing like working hard to warm yourself up, so uh, let's just go. Okay, so it's the next morning. I spent a very long time cleaning yesterday. The floor, well, Tom's outside patching up some last minute things, so he's already making the floor um, full of gravel again, but there's some semblance of normality again. We are still using this kitchen, hence why you can see we brought some stuff back. We've got the microwave, we've got the kettle. The lintels are in and the cement is now drying. So we've got to wait 48 hours for the acro props to be removed because all of that cement needs to be properly completely dry obviously before you remove the supports but because the acro props still have to stay there it means that we can't get started on leveling the floor so i've packed both sides of the lintel now with uh, the dry mix so i'm going to leave the lintels up for at least 48 hours just so the cement can dry and harden in time but in the meantime you may have noticed the window um above where the lintel's gonna rest. I need to brick that up now, just so the lintel end can be supported with the new brickwork. Um, next, we'll be cutting into the bricks to install the French doors. So as you can see, I'm breaking like half the brick away, just so the new brick can slot in there and just give extra support. So what I'm doing is just drilling some eight, 10 mil holes here, and just chiseling away so I can break off the brick in half. And so here's the finished job. All of the new bricks are in. Again, you can see kind of, this is where it ending. And uh, yes, we 
are currently stopping the cold from entering our home through the use of two reusable Morrison's bags, which I can tell you right now is not very effective. And here's from the inside again. You can see where Tom kind of knocked out bricks to add additional support where the new bricks are slotting into the old bricks. And you can see that old window lintel. And then you can see our new back doors lintel. This bit of wood here is basically just the end point as the back doors will be installed down here. This is how far they're gonna come to. So, so exciting. And there you go, another job to add to the very long list of DIY jobs I never thought we would be undertaking without professional assistance. And uh, I said it went pretty well. Our house has not yet collapsed on us. Um, obviously we did everything to building control. Everything was signed off. It was all super safe. And uh, I am slowly learning that Tom and Martin definitely know what they're doing, but, um, Still doesn't stop me from being afraid my roof's gonna fall onto my head. So that is it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope if this was something that you looked at tackling yourself, uh, it's given you a little bit of insight into how you do it. Obviously, please make sure you are always using beams and lintels that have been calculated by a professional. Please make sure you've got the proper equipment. We bought the Strong Boys and whatever these are called, I forget every single time. Uh, we bought all of those at the beginning of this renovation. So we've got all of the equipment to make sure stuff is properly supported. If you're unsure in any way, shape or form, please make sure that you get professional help. We are not professionals. Uh, we're just trying to make it work as we go. So again, hope that was enjoyable. Hope it was interesting. We've now got a couple of days to wait until those can go down. And next weekend we will be leveling the kitchen floor. We are living without a kitchen for a week. So meals will be pretty interesting. Let me know below if you'd like to see what we end up cooking without a kitchen. I can do a week's worth of meals or something like that. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting, but our back doors do get delivered on Monday morning. I am so excited to see them. We've been waiting. I think close to three months now, um, yeah, 12 weeks now. So I can't wait to see them in person. I can't wait to have them in the back here on a sunny day. Uh, and I can't wait to take you along and show you what it looks like. So yeah, next weekend or next video, we will be doing raising the floor, installing the back doors. It's all very exciting. It's all happening now. In there is completely plastered. So as soon as the back doors are in and the floor is level, we'll get the plaster into the kitchen and we will begin decorating the living room and dining room. So if you'd like to follow along, please do hit that subscribe button. If you are already subscribed, thank you so much for the support so far. I am really enjoying Document This Journey, showing you guys along. Um, and yeah, that is it. I'll catch you all next Wednesday. Goodbye. <laughs>